Now, I want to move on then now to Trump's position in the election here, because one of the big issues here that we're seeing play out is always, of course, you know, the economy. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Inflation is mm. still apparently a killer for a lot of Americans. New data released this week showed inflation edging up again to 3.2 percent in February. Yet here's what Joe Biden had to say. Wages are rising faster than prices, and now we have among the lowest inflation rates of any country in America, and still, we're still fighting to lower it even further. The lowest inflation rate of any country in America. Adam, um, <laughs> this is a putting aside the president's word salad there. This would suggest that there's a big issue politically for the president if he cannot say that prices are coming down for Americans. Yes. Yeah, well, it certainly is. And, you know, of course, there's no chance... That you know, that he'll ever be able to say that prices are actually coming down. I mean, inflation is still very much positive. It's 3.2%, as you said, over the year to February. And a few years ago, that would have been considered a massive rate of inflation. I mean, it's not low, 3.2% every year. I mean, if you, you know, if you add that up over five years, that's an enormous amount of inflation. So, you know, so ordinary Americans are feeling it. And, uh, you know, I noticed there the president said that uh, wages are rising faster than inflation. Well, you know, maybe for some people, but certainly not for most people. I think he's wrong there with the statistics. And, and, and it's probably the case that the people who are getting... Sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to say, because I thought there was a really interesting little cultural marker about this here. The New York Times, which, of course, is read by, you know, a higher income elite group of people in America, mm. they published this week a collection of 100 cheap dinners for inflation heavy times. That's how they build it. So clearly this would be <laughs> something that's affecting people, you know, at all ends of the economic spectrum now in America. Yes, but I mean, it certainly affects the poorer people the most, obviously, because they're far more attuned to, to you know, the cost of things at the supermarket, uh, you know, than, uh, than wealthy people, than the sorts of people that uh, read the New York Times. And even, you know, even civil servants, anyone who works for the federal or state government tends to get an indexation in their pay, which is linked to inflation. So, uh, you know, so the people that really suffer are the low income workers in the private sector who don't get indexation and for whom inflation uh, just makes them poorer and poorer. And also those people, you know, they tend to have savings in the bank in the form of, of um, bank deposits. And of course, every time inflation goes up, the value of those deposits declines. So, I mean, inflation really is an insidious beast for, you know, you know for a very large share of the US population. And is this cutting the chances that uh, Janet Yellen and the Fed are going to cut rates later this year, as people had been kind of talking up as something that might give the economy a boost uh, heading into the election? Yeah, look, probably it does. You know, it does at the margin make it less likely. I mean, the Fed is, is uh, you know, fairly determined to get the inflation rate back to 2%. I mean, you know, my kind of personal view is they have a lot less control over the rate of inflation than they like to think they do, <laughs> especially with interest rates. It's more about the size of money, you know, the size of the money supply, which, of course, they've increased massively in recent years, absolutely massively. Um, <clears throat> so it's, you know, that's, that's kind of where the inflation is coming from. Uh, but yes, look, I think it's, you know, it's more likely the cash rate here, and I can't quite remember what it is at the moment, four and a half or something, uh, stays where it is uh, for longer. Yeah, and finally, Adam, before I let you go, do you think that all of this is part of the reason why that State of the Union that was, uh, you know, everybody said, oh, look, he got through it, he made it through the speech. Well, only 33% of voters felt the speech <laughs> positively impacted their view of the president, so he did not get a bump out of that, and still only 37% yes. of Americans believe he's doing a good job as president. Adam, your take, I mean, mm -hmm. the State of the Union couldn't save him. Can anything well, at this point? <laughs> Yeah, well, look, at, you know, it's certainly a very low bar that, you know, that he managed to actually say all the words properly. But, you know, that's kind of where we've got to. He did, you know, he did get a big tick for that. Uh, but look, I mean, it was a, you know, it's a hyper-partisan campaign speech, I thought. And, I'm, you know, I'm sure that's what most Americans thought too. I mean, you know, they probably wonder why is this campaign speech given so much, so much attention kind of in the Congress when, you know, it could have been given anywhere. <clears throat> I mean, as you know, decades ago, the State of the Union speech was meant to be something that kind of reached across the aisle and actually talked about the serious problems the US uh, faced in a bipartisan manner. But it's certainly not the case anymore. I mean, that speech, you know, was just an attack on Republicans and Donald Trump, basically. And surely most Americans saw that. Uh, so I'm not surprised at all that uh, that he didn't get a mm. bounce in the polls. And, and look, I mean, uh, you know, I don't think there is anything that can, you know, that can improve his standing. Americans have made up their mind. It's been three years you know, I don't think all the, the tens of millions, hundreds of billions that are going to be spent on ads are going to make any difference. Well, we'll see. We've still got a long eight months to go. Adam Creighton, thanks for your time, <laughs> as always, on the U.S. Report. Thanks, James.